Hello and welcome to Common Stock Valuation Tutorial Part 2 Valuation Methodologies. My name is Max Fonorov. I'm a principal at Service Advisors, an independent firm specializing in valuations that support financial reporting and tax compliance. Our work includes valuations of common stock, financial instruments, portfolio valuations, and intangible assets. Valuation of common stock is the most prevalent valuation exercise private companies are required to complete to satisfy their financial and tax reporting needs. A typical valuation report provides a single value conclusion that often supports both financial reporting and tax compliance. Appraising the value of private company enterprise is complex enough. Valuing startups is even more challenging due to their lack of established financial performance and many uncertainties startups face in the future. While reliable prospective financial information is difficult to obtain, startups often end up with a very complex capital structure. Their capital structure consists of various classes of equity. Each class will have different economic attributes and preferences. Preferred stock, common stock, warrants, and options each have different values. Therefore, transitioning from valuing business enterprise to valuing a particular equity instrument is far from straightforward. ACPA first guidance for valuing private, privately held securities was initially published in 2005 and updated exposure draft was released in 2011. It outlines several valuation approaches and important elements of each analysis. Most valuations of common shares can be done using a combination of option pricing methodology, probability weighted expected return method, or current value method. Other elements that are commonly considered in this analysis are the discounts for control and discounts for marketability that could be incorporated in the valuation analysis. So let's go through each uh, one of those methods one by one. Option pricing methodology is one of the most commonly used methods in valuing uh, common shares of the private, uh, private company. The method and the workflow is such that the analysis starts with valuing the company as an overall business enterprise. Once the valuation of the overall company is complete, the, this value is allocated to uh, different types of um, equity that contribute to the capital structure of the company. In other words, the value of the enterprise is spread to all types of stakeholders that contributed their capital to the company. The allocation methodology is something um, that's uh, based on the option price type analysis. Uh, the reason it's called option price is because every common share is viewed as an option and uh, the underlying asset that drives the value of that option is overall business enterprise value. So uh, the more different uh, tranches of equity we have in the capital structure, uh, the more complex the allocation model will be. The uh, typical, uh, typically the, the key uh, inputs to the allocation uh, waterfall schedule is the business enterprise value, uh, volatility of the underlying asset or volatility of that equity value and the term in other words how long will it be before the common shareholders may expect some kind of um, return or be able to sell their shares in the future while the allocation methodology is uh, not very intuitive and not straightforward to understand it, it is great in in a way that um, it's a very um, specific and so it leaves very little room for judgment in terms of how it's being implemented. Once you have the enterprise value, the common share value is pretty much predetermined with um, a short list of assumptions, that is volatility and term. Volatility is typically derived based on the comparable publicly traded companies and there is a very specific, rather prescriptive methodology on how to come up with the volatility. Term ends up being the only area where there is uh, any uh, type of flexibility left for, for an analyst 
or for valuation specialist to affect the outcome of this valuation analysis. And so even though option pricing methodology um, may require some getting used to, it provides a very reliable value conclusion. So uh, from that standpoint, again, the methodology is uh, very, um, uh, very welcome, in a especially in a regulatory environment and financial reporting environment. The second methodology that's uh, commonly used is, um, and quite frankly, completely different, is the probability weighted expected return method. This is essentially a scenario analysis. A scenario analysis where um, typically scenarios considered, inclu considered include um, IPO, uh, sale of the company, a scenario where company continues its operations as an independent private company, and the fourth is when the company fails. Those uh, four scenarios uh, may lead to different values for common shares, and so the common share value is calculated under each scenario, and then it's discounted back to the present value uh, to account for uh, time value of money. And uh, four different uh, common share values then uh, weighted average to come up with the concluded common share value as of the valuation date. The uh, approach is very intuitive and it's very easy to start down that path. The challenge with it has to do with uh, how to actually support the numerous assumptions that go into this type of analysis. So for example, it's the assumptions that one will have to make have to do with what's the probabilities of those different scenarios. Uh, how long before each one of those scenarios or company will reach liquidity in each uh, one of those scenarios, and uh, what kind of discount rates to use for different scenarios or um, different um, um, uh, different methodologies within each scenario. In other words, the um, while the initial idea is very intuitive, the implementation becomes very hard. And so uh, when a management or appraiser chooses to use this methodology, he or she has to be very careful about how you um, justify this type of approach. Uh, there are some um, industries or companies that will not yield themselves to the option pricing methodology. And some of it has to do with the mathematics of the Black and Schultz formula that underlies this option pricing method. Uh, the distribution of returns for um, industries such as biotechnology or clean tech uh, may not uh, be perfectly uh, aligned with how Black and Scholes formula um, requires it for it to be accurate. And so the probability weighted expected return method in that case uh, could be um, something that is uh, really um, not an option, but um, a requirement uh, to be used uh, as opposed to option pricing methodology. The uh, new um, ACPA practice aid also does a great job in blending uh, different uh, ty different fundamental approaches. And so, for example, the hybrid method is a blend between the PWARM and uh, OPM approach. Uh, you will see that uh, really two scenarios, main scenarios that are considered here are uh, the company goes through the IPO or a company stays private. Uh, this type of approach is typically used when the IPO is maybe imminent, but again, not assured, and uh, also will uh, provide for quite a different value of common share if the company goes IPO versus company staying private, obviously. And uh, so what this type of approach does, it allows you to split the future into two different scenarios. Again, the scenario analysis. Uh, again, you have to support the probability of the company going IPO, which uh, quite frankly, there's not that much statistical data that one may utilize to truly mathematically support that type of assumption. And so most of the time it's left to just the judgment of the management. And uh, the second node of this analysis is really a straightforward option pricing methodology. Um, so that's uh, one method that uh, could 
blend to different approaches as we described before. Baxall methodology is actually something that um, a lot of people like to use and a lot of reviewers like to see. Uh, Baxall method is really an option pricing methodology, only much more simplified. Um, as uh, we discussed in option pricing methodology, first we have to come up with the value of the enterprise and then allocate that value of the enterprise to different types of equity. In the Baxall methodology, we still have to build this allocation waterfall model, but instead of having enterprise value as an input for the val uh, into that model, we'll uh, drive uh, this model with um, the value of preferred shares as uh, one of their inputs. This uh, approach can be used uh, when the company closed their round of financing very recently. And uh, so in that case, the value of the preferred share is known and it's being plugged into this model, which then will provide the value of the common share. As a byproduct of this model, we can also look at the enterprise value of that company, which uh, may be useful, but uh, really it's not uh, required in this type of analysis. All we need to know is the value of the common share, and it's really very nicely uh, calculated based on the value of the preferred share. So in all of those four methodologies, the it's important to uh, understand how uh, the uh, different fundamental uh, building pieces are implemented so it's really a combination of option pricing methodology and scenario analysis and um, on in addition to that it's also important to understand how the discounts for lack of control and lack of marketability applied for uh, for those uh, different uh, methods so with that uh, we'll uh, conclude our part two presentation. The next part three will cover common approaches in business enterprise valuations. Thank you for listening.